Welcome to Physics Video Lectures. Today we are going to talk about freefall. Some scientists consider freefall and its researching as the beginning of modern science. So, what is so interesting about the simple falling of stone or anything else? The impact of this free falling caused disagreements between these two birded guys. The first one is Aristotle, who as the first described motion including motion of free falling bodies. The second one is Galileo Galilei, who said, Hey Aristotle, you are wrong. The motion of this object is different as you are saying. What exactly did Aristotle say? His first note is the speed of free falling bodies is directly proportional to their weights. This looks so obvious. Everybody knows that light feather falls slower than something heavier, for example a bowling ball. We can see it on this slow motion recording. The bowling ball fell down first. That means its speed is higher than speed of the feathers. The second Aristotle's note is the speed of free falling bodies is inversely proportional to the density of medium through which they move. Yes, we know that too. That was the reason for, for the most watching free fall of a human being when Austrian Felix Baumgartner wanted to reach the speed of sound by freefall. Because of the density effect, he had to go to the height 39 kilometers to the less dense atmosphere. He was successful and he set world records for skydiving on October 2012. Let's take a look on this breathtaking performance. The last Aristotle's note is that the speed of free falling bodies is not changed during the fall and it is constant. On the other side, Galileo claims that the speed of free falling bodies doesn't depend on their weights and overmore, this speed is not constant but it is increasing during the whole fall. And here are some questions for you. What do you think? Imagine two stones from the same material. Stone A is two times heavier than stone B. Which of these stones will be faster? Which of them is attracted more by the gravity force? And the last question is, what do you think about change of the speed? Is it changing or is it not? Do you get your answers? If yes, we can continue. What may be very helpful to finding correct answers to these questions is an experiment. Experiment is the base for sciences. Without an experiment you can't prove your answers and Galileo was one of the first who knew that. Galileo was Italian and except pizza or Italian pasta, Italy is also very famous for its leaning tower of pizza. There is a story about Galileo who was throwing stones with different weights from the top of this tower and observed which of them hit the ground first. In fact, he didn't need this tower experiment. He got by with the, the thought experiment. If we take two bodies whose natural speeds are different, it is clear that on uniting the two, the more rapid one will be partly retarded by the slower, and the slower will be somewhat hastened by the swifter. If a large stone moved with a speed of, say, 8, while a smaller moved with a speed of 4, then when they are united, the system will move with a speed less than 8. However, the two stones, when tied together, make a stone larger than that which before moved with the speed of 8. Hence the heavier body, the new which consists of uh, the two former ones, uh, moves with the less speed than the lighter, an effect which is contrary to previous supposition. And now another example. Take two 
identical bodies with the same natural speed. Cut one of them into two smaller pieces. Tie these pieces together and let them fall. On one side the speed of the tied stones should be less because they are lighter than before. On the other side, tied stones have to gather the same weight as before and they should fall down by the same speed as before. We can see that Aristotle's hypotheses are inconsistent. This contradiction leads us to the conclusion that the assumption is false. And now take a look on the previous experiment with the feathers and the bowling ball. We change conditions and we let them fall in this case in the vacuum chamber. This is the slow motion recording again. Release. As you can see, they both fall down at the same time. They have the same speed. What is results tell us about dependence of the speed on the body's weight? The weight, as Galileo said, has no effect on the speed of free-falling bodies. However, what exactly has the effect is the air resistance. Air resistance acts to slow an object down. When air resistance is negligible, in comparing with the force of gravity, an object hit the ground later. We can see this on uh, very light objects, for example feathers, falling snowflakes or raindrops. The next difference between Aristotle and Galileo was about change of speed. We can handle this by this picture. Let fall a tennis ball next to the ruler and record it by your digital camera. Then play your recording and look where was the ball after some time. This image, spanning half a second, was captured with a stroboscopic flash at 20 flashes per second. We can see position of uh, this ball after each 1 20th uh, of a second. During the first 1 over 20, uh, the ball drops 1 unit of distance, during the next it drops 4 unit of distance, As we can see, distance of the ball was proportional to the square of the elapsed time. We plot the graph of distance as a function of time. The distance time graph looks exactly like the graph of uh, an object with a constant non-zero acceleration starting from rest at the origin. The relation between displacement and time is quadratic and therefore this curve is a parabola. The equation for this function is S is 4.95 times time squared. The velocity, the velocity of an object is the rate of change of its position with respect to time. We can express the, the instantaneous velocity of an object at any particular time t as the derivative of this of the position with respect to time. Uh, velocity will be 9.81 times t. The velocity is proportional to time. Number 9.81 is g, the acceleration due to gravity. Then we can express our ex equation like this. The last Aristotle's note about free-falling bodies was about dependence between speed and density of the medium. We would like to let you verify this hypothesis by yourself. Do experiment. Let you fall down um, an object in the three different mediums, for example air, water, oil or anything else. Find its density, you can measure its mass and volume and then calculate the density with this ratio. Measure time of free falling from the same height and then plot the time density graph. Finally compare your results with Aristotle's ideas. Let's go back to our quiz questions. The first question was uh, which of these two stones will be faster? We can forget on air resistance, the correct answer is none of them. 
they will accelerate equally with acceleration g which is 9.91 meter per second squared what is attracted more by gravity force uh, the correct answer is stone a it has higher mass and gravity force is proportional to, to the mass of an object and uh, why they don't have different velocities if they are attracted by different forces because if uh, gravity force uh, is equal m times g and you express g it is equal to f over mass if mass is two times higher then 4 is 2 times higher and after quick cosmetic treatment we can uh, have uh, the same value for the acceleration of an object and finally is its speed changing during the fall or is it not as we mentioned before the correct answer is yes it is the speed increase 9.81 meter per second every second thanks for watching and don't fall down